the sixth generation Honda Goldwing might be the best touring motorcycle ever built. The DCT transmission is an industry first. That front suspension design is revolutionary. The 1.8 liter engine has tons of power and low end torque, but are the Goldwing days numbered? Is the Goldwing being dropped from the Honda lineup? Well, let's talk about that. Hey everyone, I'm Cruiseman, and today I want to talk to you about the future of the Honda Goldwing, assuming there's going to be one. But before I get started, I want to remind you that if you have a passion for motorcycles, no matter what brand or type of bike you ride, I could care less, I'd invite you to subscribe to this channel. It's completely free to subscribe. All you have to do is click that little subscribe button under the video and don't forget the notification bell. Now YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. And while this video does not have a sponsor, videos like this are only possible because thousands of Goldwing owners around the world, 31 countries, purchase my Goldwing maintenance video series that supports this channel. I have maintenance videos for every year model from 2001 through 2022. And you can save as much as $1,000 a year by performing your own routine maintenance on your Goldwing. And these videos will show you how. And I'll put links in the description of the video. So I've decided to split this video into two parts. First, I want to talk about the rumors circulating that suggests the demise of the Goldwing. In part two, we're going to talk about some features that I want to see in the 2023, 2024, or future Goldwings. Now, a few weeks ago, some rumors started circulating on Facebook and YouTube suggesting that Honda is planning to discontinue the Goldwing. I've watched a couple of different YouTube videos, I've read a few articles, and honestly, I can't decide whether some of this is fake news or clickbait or maybe both. I have yet to personally see anything officially announced from Honda. I've heard a couple of different rumors. The first one is that the Goldwing no longer can meet the EU emission standards. Uh, another rumor suggests that the Goldwing no longer meets Japan's emission standards. And bro both rumors center around these emission standards. I haven't seen anything about the United States emission standards not being met by the Goldwing. Now, one rumor suggests that to address the emission standards, Honda may just drop the Goldwing from its product lineup altogether, along with several other models. Now, another rumor suggests that Honda may drop the manual transmission models and only offer a DCT, which can be tweaked through the ECU to deliver better emission numbers. Another rumor suggests that perhaps Honda will simply no longer sell the Goldwing in Japan. So which of these rumors should we believe? Well, I think it's safe to assume that the current Goldwing may not meet future emission standards. However, this new engine was just released in 2018 after years of development. The Goldwing engine was designed from the ground up as a brand new engine. Surely Honda knew what the emission standards were going to be in the near future and took that into consideration. Now, I would suggest that if the standards have become more restrictive since the new engine was released, then Honda may, may not want to invest in an entirely new engine design only four years since the release of this engine. I've heard some suggest that Honda is dropping the Goldwing due to a lack of demand and that sales are far below pre-pandemic levels. But I've seen a lot of comments from people who've had a 2022 on order for months and can't get one. I don't think demand is the problem here. If demand was the problem, you'd see discounted Goldwings on every dealer showroom. The problem is supply. Honda is obviously suffering from supply chain issues like everyone else. I've heard others even suggest that Honda's dropping existing models in preparation for an entire line of electric motorcycles. Now, I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that Honda's moving in this direction. I know there are a lot of true believers out there holding out hope for an all-electric Goldwing. But you got to quit drinking the EV Kool-Aid long enough to realize that nobody's going to buy a touring bike with a 100-mile range. 
not to mention it would probably weigh 1,200 pounds due to the batteries required and take an hour to recharge. In fact, Honda hadn't even really dipped its toe into the electric motorcycle market. So what evidence is there that the Goldwing is likely to remain in the Honda lineup? Well, first, I find it hard to believe that Honda would drop the flagship model just three years from a 50th anniversary. But anything's possible. There are a lot of things I never thought I'd see that I'm seeing right now. A second, there hadn't been any official announcements from Honda stating that the Goldwing is going away, or at least none that I've seen. I also haven't seen any articles in the legacy respected motorcycle press to back up these rumors either. Now third, just this week, I've been in talks with Honda about obtaining a 2022 Goldwing press bike to review for this channel. Would Honda still be seeking media coverage for a bike it plans to discontinue? And four, the Goldwing is a very profitable model for Honda with an MSRP of nearly $30,000 it has huge margins. Just think how many groms Honda has to sell to make the same profit as one Goldwing. And five, any drop in Goldwing sales over the past two years is because of the supply chain. The Goldwing is the most advanced motorcycle Honda builds. Therefore, it has more electronics and gadgets than any other bike. If only one of those parts or pieces is in short supply, it can disrupt the entire Goldwing supply chain for weeks or months. Now, I'm not even sure if my dealer in Oklahoma has seen a single 2022 Goldwing Tour this year. The main thing to remember is that all this is talk right now. It's just based on rumors. We simply don't know. I distinctly remember these same kind of rumors floating around in 2010 when there was no 2011 model offered. The next thing we knew, there was a refreshed 2012 Goldwing introduced. Next. I'm going to lay out what I would like to see in future Goldwing models. If we go forward on the assumption that there will be a 2023 Goldwing, what's it going to look like? Or better yet, what should it look like? Well, I predict it's going to be virtually identical to the 2022 model. No change in colors, no change in features, other than maybe some very minor changes. There will be a price increase, so be prepared. I warned you last year about inflation, and my predictions came true. While politicians and media continue to tell us that the inflation rate is only 9.1%, and we're not that stupid, we've seen fuel more than double in price over the past two years. And it didn't start with the war in Ukraine. My electric bill last month was nearly double what I paid a year ago. Airline ticket prices are up more than 50%. Hotels, 30%. Used car prices, 30%. Food is up double digits. Therefore, a 2023 Goldwing Tour is most likely going to be in the $30,000 range. Now, while I don't think we're going to see many changes to the 2023, if any, what do I want to see in a future Goldwing? Well, as I mentioned in the past, there is a real need for a redesigned horn button. The existing horn button is awkwardly located and I continue to accidentally hit the turn signal cancel button when trying to find the horn. And I've been riding this for four years. The lack of adaptive cruise control is not a deal killer for me, but it's a technology that would bring the Goldwing up to the same standards as the BMW R1250RT and even Ducati's Multistrada. I could see Honda revamping the TFT screen to something along the lines of BMW, like the K1600. I might even be okay with Honda dropping the built-in navigation in favor of some sort of app-based system like BMW has. But it needs to be able to use GPX files from Basecamp, and it should have improved graphics. Man, would I love to be part of a team to spec out a new navigation system for the Goldwing. Honestly, there have been so many advances in Apple Maps and Google Maps that the CarPlay Android Auto integration could replace the need for a Honda navigation system or a navigation app. The upcoming version of Apple Maps will allow you to add pit stops to a route, basically waypoints. I may not be ready to go there just yet, but it looks promising. Wireless CarPlay and Android Auto is a must for any new Goldwing infotainment system. 
If I can buy a stupid dongle for $100 and get wireless CarPlay, then by God, Honda can build that technology into the bike. Built-in Wi-Fi should also mean it can update the bike's audio or navigation system wirelessly. All audio and navigation functions should respond to voice commands to alleviate the need for the rider to take his or her eyes off the road to fumble with switches. I should be able to say, hey Goldwing, play AM820, or hey Goldwing, I need directions to the nearest fuel stop. Or how about, hey Goldwing, what's my fuel range? But to make all of this work, Honda desperately will need to update the Bluetooth integration on the Goldwing. I just have too many issues getting both Senna and Cardo headsets to connect reliably. I didn't have any issues getting that Senna 50C to connect to the BMW TFT. But on my Goldwing, I have to cycle the headset twice to get a connection. And sometimes, not every time. It's very frustrating. On my Dream Goldwing, I'd be able to customize that TFT screen to include a digital speedometer, maybe a compass. How about having the colors change based on what ride mode you're in? Blue for Tour, green for Econ, red for Sport. Why not? They do it in cars. The onboard computer needs a major refresh as well. I should not have to add a cheap-ass $15 Chinese voltmeter to my $30,000 flagship motorcycle just to see my battery charge. As I mentioned last year, I'd like to see Honda offer more color choices in the future, or at least some different colors. But I've let that dream die. Right now, I just wish they could ship the colors they offer now. Improved AM-FM reception is a must for a new audio system. There's a 50,000 watt AM station here in Dallas that I lose after I ride 60 miles from the city limit, while my Lexus can pick up the same radio station 150 miles away. Even if Honda has to add a shorty antenna to the tour box, I'd be okay with that, just to get better reception. The center pocket should have an integrated lock that is part of the automatic locking system, and for God's sakes, put a fan in the center pocket and wireless charging for my cell phone. When you walk away from the bike out of range, it would be nice if you could have a chirp or some audible beep to let the owner know that the bags are locked. The fuel filler cap is also kind of clunky. I shouldn't have to open the side pocket and push a button to open the fuel filler lid. The fuel filler lid should simply press and open, kind of like it does on my Lexus. As long as the smart key's in range, you just press the lid and open it. Of course, a more comfortable seat would be greatly appreciated. I mean, all you have to do is modify the padding and the cover. John Conley can do it. Why can't Honda? Come on. If you think I'm done, you'd be mistaken. When we come back, I have a few more features that I'd like to see on my future Goldwing. A refreshed Goldwing should have the latest in technology. Cornering ABS, for example, is something I expect on my Goldwing. Honda could also improve the suspension components and offer dynamic electronic suspension adjustment. I also would not mind a retuned exhaust to get rid of that annoying 70 mile per hour drone. If Honda's not going to include Homelink, at least pre-install the damn buttons. Okay, I've laid out my wish list for the future Goldwing. What are some of the features that you would like to see in a future Goldwing model? Please put yours in the comments down below this video. One thing these rumors of a world without a Goldwing have revealed is just how much we've all grown to love this motorcycle. For many of us, it's been a part of our lives for many years, or even decades. I was talking to a friend just the other day who said he has owned 10 different Goldwings over the past 40 years. How many products can you say that about? Hey, if you like this video, I'd appreciate if you'd give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends on social media. I look forward to seeing your comments down below. Thanks for joining me today, and remember, ride often, but always ride safe.